Um, hello there. I thought since I had a carburetor at hand, as you can see by the allotted parts on the table, I would show you how to put a carburetor back together and how to check things as you go along. Now, as we can see, we have the carburetor body, which is this big hump of metal here. We have the float ball itself. We have the floats, which go into the main part of the carburetor. The pivot point for the floats, the four screws that retain the float ball. We then have three jets. We have the main jet, the needle jet, and we have the idler jet. This is the mixture screw here, which goes into the body of the carburetor as well. We have the choke assembly, a retainer nut for the top, and that retains the slide assembly, which is here. So with that, we shall get into it, and we shall put the camera down here in a nice position to oversee the work area. Now the first thing to do when you're going, going to rebuild your carb is make sure everything's nice and clean. There's no like rust dis deposits or anything inside the carb because even the littlest of bits of dirt can get stuck in the jet because the jet holes, if I put this one up here, are tiny. And that's the biggest jet on the bike. This is the main jet, which is a... Ooh, let's have a look here. It's a 75, I think, by... Uh, it's a 75. All jets have got numbers designated on them for the, the size of the jet. And this is this this one has even smaller holes on it, and this is the idler jet, which is for um, tick over and me um, low speeds of the engine. So, yeah. So the first thing you do is check if things in clean. So you see you don't want any dirt on them. So the first thing you put in is the jets. So the first one I'm going to put in is the main jet here. So get this over here like that. Now these are all brass and brass is soft so you don't want them too tight. You just want them basically... Oh, firstly you just put them in with your hands and then I haven't got a 6mm um, span on this but literally just nip them. Not even that much, just, just a tight nip. Because if you nip them up any more, you risk of um, threading the, the the threads in it, and once you've done that, you buggered. Next one, sorry if I've gone ahead of myself. Next one to put in is the idler jet, which actually just goes down in this little hole here. And because most idler jets will have a cross head on them, and you just literally screw them in, and it's the same for the other one. Just feel it until it's finger tight, and then just give it a quick nip, just to make sure. And th these are the two main jets in. The next one to go in is the um, needle jet, which consists of two parts. Consists of the needle, which is this bit here, and this um, little jet here, which is where the needle sits in and allows fuel to go up and go up through it when it needs it in the carburetor. It's basically like the system on your toilet. It's exactly the same actually. So we then put that in here. It's actually very fiddly to do this one because you've got the two posts here for the pivot point for the floats. So it's just a matter of getting it in. And once you've got it in, to finger tight by yourself, get a 10mm spanner, which is for this one, and just tighten it up until it feels like it's tight. It's starting to put now. There's a washer on the bottom of this as well, so there we go. That's all tight. We then stick in the needle jet. Now this is important because if you miss this one out, your carburetor is just going to flood all the time. And make sure it's it it's free moving in there. So make sure it doesn't stick or anything because that will also cause the, either the float to or the carburetor to leak or flood, I should say. And also, if you're not getting enough, it'll cause the bike to run unevenly. Uh, next things to go in are the floats, which is these things here, these brass floats, and they sit on top of the um, needle jet, like a so, and then we retain these by the pivot, the little pivot there which goes through the two mounts either side. Now, if we take a closer look at the carburetor here, if you can see that there's a little tongue, tongue on the actual needles, on, on the on, <laughs> on the floats, and this tongue controls 
the actual needle jet and this will if you look to your guide if you've got a, a maintenance manual for the bike it'll tell you how these floats sit with the face of the carburetor I've forgotten what this one is but it's already been set so I'll just leave that so if if you don't know if this is set right check to your um your book and get a little metal ruler put it up against this one's against this surface here and you measure from that surface to the top of the float and you see if it's right and then if it's not you just bend the tongue up and so forth until you've got it right now the next thing to go on is the float bolt itself now there should be a gasket on here but um, it's in me thing of drawers over there so pretend I've put a gasket on and then this goes on top and that's the right bit, yep. When that's on, we stick the four screws in. Now, like everything, you don't over tighten. You do not want to over tighten your screws and thread the um, the screw holes themselves. Now, this is just a habit I've gone into. It's a very good habit, and it's what my dad taught us, is to always do screws in a cross fashion. It's to be honest, if if you've got anything to do with mechanics, you should already know this to equally torque the whatever you're screwing down onto the surface you're screwing it onto. So you first go around in the cross, just literally finger tight, then you just give them a quick nip in the same cross. So if I can get the screw in, so nip that up. And nip that one up. Nip this one up. And there's that done. We then flip it over onto the onto the back surface here. And next thing to go in is the mixture screw, like so. And this should actually just go in by finger firstly. So if we just put that in, screw it in when it starts getting tight like that. And I know for a fact, just because I've worked, <laughs> I've done these carburetors before. It's one, two three so it's three half turns out that's the stock setting and um, next thing to go on is the choke so we've got the choke there got the plunger and this just actually slots in and the choke assembly goes onto the top and this is where the cable would be retained I'm just nip that up there is that big enough? It might not be. Nope, it's not, but you would just quickly give that a nip up. Yet again, you don't over tighten. Now, the slide goes in a certain way. There's a little pin inside there, and this actually mates up to the cutout on the side of the slide. And we just actually gradually put that down there, just feeling, and that should go into the jet, the, the needle should just go straight into the front. Oh, straight into the hole that's down the bottom there, like a so. And then there's a little notch on the side here, which retains the assembly to stop it twisting around. And then on top of that goes the retainer. The one thing about carburet is they are simple. Like it's just taking us, what should we say, five, five, six minutes to put that together. But like I say, stripping one, you have to clean it so it's spick and span because you don't want one bit of dirt going into a carburetor because once that happens, <laughs> you're never going to get the bike running right, especially the size of the jet. But the the simple and the concept behind them's simple as well. It's just basically using different pressures to suck fuel through the carburetor and mix it. It's bunet bu bu it, uh, I forgot what it is now. But well, basically, that's a Venturi and use Bernoulli's equation. That's it to work it out. It's Bernoulli's theories and stuff, which I do in my course. But like I say, if you've got a car button, it's easy accessible, and you've got a bit of mechanical know how, it's pretty easy to strip and clean one. But, um,. Like most people of today, they don't really have that much to do with bikes or anything because they're all electronic and you can't really work on them yourself. You have to send it off to a person who's got a computer that can plug in and then that'll just tell you everything. It's kind of took the fun out of it and to be honest I think it's going to take 
a lot of new people out of self mechanics and also getting into bike restorations and all that because they're not going to know what to do. But yeah, that's as easy as that to strip a carburetor and to sort it back out. That's it.